Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. On May 27th, 2025, SpaceX launched its ninth test flight of the Starship Mega Rocket from its Starbase facility near Boca Chica, Texas, marking another bold step in its mission to develop a fully reusable spacecraft capable of carrying humans and cargo to Earth, orbit the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Designated Integrated Flight Test 9, IFT-9, this mission was a significant milestone, as it featured the first reuse of a super-heavy booster which had previously flown on Flight 7 in January 2025. Despite achieving key objectives, such as successful stage separation and the upper stage reaching space, the mission ended in disappointment with the loss of both stages before they could complete their planned tasks. Nevertheless, the flight provided critical data that will inform future iterations of Starship, bringing SpaceX closer to its goal of revolutionizing space travel. Flight 9 was particularly significant because it marked the first time SpaceX reused a Super Heavy booster, identified as Booster 14-2, which had flown successfully on Flight 7. Of its 33 Raptor engines, 29 were reused from the previous mission, with only four replaced, demonstrating progress toward rapid reusability with minimal maintenance. The upper stage, Ship 35, was a new Block 2 prototype, assembled in SpaceX's Mega Bay 2 and subjected to extensive pre-flight testing, including three rounds of cryogenic testing in March and multiple static fire tests in April and May. These tests, conducted at SpaceX's Massey's test site, included a single-engine static fire, a long-duration burn that experienced an abnormal shutdown, and a six-engine test lasting 64 seconds, the longest to date for a Starship upper stage. As the launch window approached on May 27th, Anticipation built among SpaceX engineers, space enthusiasts, and the global audience tuning into the live webcast. The launch was initially scheduled for 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, but was delayed by seven minutes, lifting off at 7.37 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 6.37 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The rocket ascended smoothly its 33 Raptor engines creating a brilliant plume of flame and smoke that illuminated the Texas sky. Spectators watching from nearby Boca Chica Beach and online via SpaceX's live stream marveled at the sheer power of the vehicle, which stands approximately 400 feet tall when fully stacked. The initial phase of the flight proceeded as planned. The Super Heavy booster performed its ascent burn flawlessly, and at the predetermined time, it separated from the Starship upper stage. Ship 35 continued its trajectory, successfully reaching space and crossing the Karman line, the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space, marking a significant achievement. This was the first time since Flight 6 in November 2024 that a Starship upper stage had reached space, a notable improvement over flights 7 and 8, which both ended in upper stage failures during ascent. The successful stage separation and orbital insertion were met with cheers from the SpaceX team, who saw it as a step forward despite the challenges that followed. However, the mission's difficulties emerged during the descent phase of the Super Heavy booster. Approximately 6 minutes and 20 seconds after launch, as the booster began its landing burn, it suffered a catastrophic failure. Unlike previous flights where the booster had been caught by the launch tower's chopstick arms, Flight 9 intentionally targeted a hard splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico to test a steeper descent trajectory. This approach aimed to increase atmospheric drag, reducing the propellant needed for landing and gathering data on the booster's performance under stress. Unfortunately, the booster broke apart just after its engines reignited, leading SpaceX to confirm its loss. The company noted that, while disappointing, such outcomes are expected in developmental testing, especially given the experimental nature of the flight profile. I'd like to quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.
We regularly upload informative SpaceX and space news videos that you won't want to miss. Be sure to turn on the notification bell so you're notified whenever we release new content. Concurrently, the Starship Upper Stage, Ship 35, encountered its own set of challenges. After reaching its planned suborbital trajectory, which would have taken it eastward over the Atlantic Ocean toward a splashdown off Western Australia, the vehicle faced two critical issues. First, the payload door designed to deploy eight dummy Starlink satellites failed to open fully, preventing their release. These mass simulators, weighing approximately 16,000 kilograms, were intended to test Starship's ability to deploy payloads, a key function for future operational missions. The door malfunction was a significant setback, as it missed an opportunity to validate this capability. More critically, a propellant leak developed in the upper stage's fuel tank systems, leading to a loss of attitude control. The vehicle began to tumble slowly, as reported by SpaceX's Dan Hoot during the webcast. As you can see in some of the views and from some of the telemetry, we are in a little bit of a spin. This loss of control made it impossible to perform a planned in-space relight of one of the Raptor engines, scheduled for about 38 minutes after launch, and ruled out a controlled re-entry and splashdown. Consequently, Ship 35 was also lost, though it transmitted valuable telemetry data throughout its flight. Flight 9 was designed to build on the lessons learned from previous tests, particularly Flight 7 and 8, which both ended in upper stage failures. In January 2025, Flight 7's upper stage disintegrated, less than 10 minutes after launch, due to propellant leaks caused by a harmonic response in the vehicle's structure, raining debris on the Turks and Caicos Islands. In March, Flight 8 suffered a similar fate when a hardware failure in a Raptor engine triggered an explosion, with debris falling over the Bahamas. SpaceX conducted detailed analyses of these failures, identifying distinct root causes. For Flight 7, they implemented modifications to propellant feed lines, adjusted thrust levels, added vents, and introduced a new nitrogen purge system. For Flight 8, improvements included enhancing the propellant drain system, tightening joints, and refining the Raptor engines. These changes were intended to increase reliability, but the new issues encountered during Flight 9, such as the payload door failure and propellant leak, highlight the complexity of developing a fully reusable rocket. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, played a critical role in ensuring the safety of Flight 9. Following its investigation into Flight 8, the FAA granted SpaceX permission to launch, expanding the aircraft hazard area to approximately 1,840 statute miles, compared to 885 miles for Flight 8. This expansion, which extended eastward through the Straits of Florida, was necessary to account for the uncertainties associated with reusing hardware and testing new flight parameters. The FAA required the launch to occur during non-peak air travel periods to minimize disruptions, reflecting the growing complexity of Starship's test program as it pushes toward operational status. SpaceX's development philosophy is rooted in rapid iteration and learning from failures, a stark contrast to traditional aerospace approaches that prioritize extensive ground testing. This method allows SpaceX to gather real-world data quickly, accelerating progress, but also making failures more visible. Each test flight contributes to refining the design and operations of Starship, bringing it closer to its goal of becoming a fully reusable transportation system. During the Flight 9 webcast, Dan Hewat captured this ethos, stating, We are trying to do something that is impossibly hard. You're not going to reach it in a straight line. There's going to be bumps. There's going to be turns. But seeing that ship in space today was a hell of a moment for us. So congratulations to every single person who put time, effort, sweat, anything into that rocket.
His words underscored the resilience and determination that drives SpaceX's endeavors. Flight 9 included several experiments to gather data for future improvements. The Super Heavy booster was tested with a higher angle of attack during descent to reduce propellant consumption for landing burns, providing insights into its aerodynamic stability and structural integrity. The upper stage featured modified heat shield tiles, including an active cooling system and alternative materials, to assess their performance during re-entry. Although the tumbling prevented a full evaluation, initial data offered valuable feedback. SpaceX also tested functional catch fittings on Ship 35, preparing for future missions where the upper stage could be caught by the launch tower, similar to the successful booster catch demonstrated on Flight 5 in October 2024. The dummy Starlink satellites, though not deployed, were designed to mimic the mass and deployment characteristics of operational satellites, highlighting Starship's potential for large-scale payload delivery. The Starship program is central to SpaceX's vision of making humanity multiplanetary, with Mars as a primary destination. Elon Musk has outlined plans to begin uncrewed missions to Mars as early as 2026, followed by crewed missions shortly thereafter. These ambitious timelines depend on overcoming the technical challenges revealed in each test flight, but the progress made thus far suggests that such goals are within reach. Beyond Mars, Starship is integral to NASA's Artemis program, serving as the human landing system for Artemis III, targeted for 2026. This mission will see astronauts return to the Moon's surface, with Starship providing transportation from lunar orbit to the surface and back. The selection of Starship for this role underscores confidence in its capabilities and its importance to international space exploration efforts. Starship's potential extends to commercial applications as well. Its ability to carry up to 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit could revolutionize satellite deployment enabling rapid expansion of constellations like Starlink. Its spacious interior and reusability make it suitable for space tourism, with plans for point-to-point -point travel on Earth and orbital trips. The development of Starship has also had significant economic impacts in South Texas, creating jobs and attracting investment. However, local concerns about environmental and community impacts persist necessitating ongoing mitigation efforts and regulatory oversight. As SpaceX analyzes the data from Flight 9, it will focus on addressing the booster's failure during landing and the upper stage's propellant leak and door malfunction. The company's iterative process ensures that each test, even those with setbacks, contributes to refining Starship's design. With plans for more frequent flights and ambitious goals for Mars and lunar missions, SpaceX remains undeterred. The journey to a multi-planetary future is fraught with challenges, but each flight brings humanity closer to that vision. Flight 9, while not a complete success, was a testament to SpaceX's commitment to pushing the boundaries of what's possible, paving the way for a future where the stars are within reach. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.